one click is all it takes to lose everything. We are in a cyber war. You can either be a defendant or you could be a victim. Is online shopping safe? That's a question I always get. Well, let me ask you a question. Is walking down the street safe? Is driving a car safe? Is going into a store safe? Guess what? The answer to every one of those is not 100%. Do you realize every time you walk down the street, some car could go out of control, run up on the sidewalk and hit you? When you go across a crosswalk, somebody might not be paying attention and they could blow a stop sign or make a fast turn and hit you. Every single day, people get hit and get into accidents walking. Every single day when people drive their car, they get into accidents. It's going to happen. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, hmm, you know something? I think I'm gonna get into an accident today. I think that's a good idea. No, nobody says that, but it still happens, which means things that we do in everyday life are not safe. There's exposure points and there's vulnerabilities. So the same thing with online shopping, it is not 100% safe. But here's the difference. Most people, when they get in a car, they recognize that there are risks. They recognize they could get into an accident. They recognize that they could do everything correctly and somebody can still run a red light or do something they're not supposed to and hit your car. But here's the trick. You subconsciously, you don't even realize you do this anymore, you go in and say, okay, what is the risk or the downside of driving a car? What is the upside or benefit? And you decide that you can live with the downside. You decide that the upside of being able to get to your destination, get there quicker and faster, far outweighs the risk of getting into an accident, so you make that decision. And there are some people that won't drive. I have one of my friend's mom, she will not get in a car because she's been in way too many car accidents that she's afraid to drive, which is okay. She made that decision and guess what? Because she never gets in a car, she will never get into a car accident, but she loses the benefit. She can't go far distances, she can't go on trips, she can't go to see her grandkids, so she has to go in and live with that reduced functionality to outweigh that risk. That's how we have to look at online shopping. That's how we have to look at cybersecurity. What is the benefit and what is the risk? And this is the problem. Most people don't do that. When it comes to cybersecurity, we lose common sense. So what you have to ask yourself is, what is the benefit of purchasing and buying products online versus what is the risk that my credit card or personal information might get compromised or might get stolen? And then you ask the most important question, can I live with the downside? Can I go and live with that downside? Or the better question is, what can I do to reduce or minimize the downside? And I'll tell you what I do. I do online shopping, a couple things. I only go from trusted sites, so I only use Amazon. Nothing against small vendors, I love small vendors, I think they're great, but when you start getting into these smaller, one-off sites, it's hard to know what's legit, what's not, how long they'll be around. So I stick with the big named e-commerce sites. Second, I always turn on the additional security features. Do you realize that all of these sites have security built in? That's a good news. Bad news, because a lot of people don't like the inconvenience, it's turned off by default. So you have to know to turn it on. So if you're gonna do e-commerce, spend the three or four minutes to go in and turn on all that additional security. One of the big ones you wanna do is what we call 2FA, two-factor authentication. This means that every time you log in, not only do I put my username and password, but it also texts me a one-time pin that I enter in. Now I'm controlling and managing when I log in. Second, I put notifications. Whenever somebody is logging in from a new device or a new location, I get a text. Now at first you might go, well, isn't that an annoyance? 
Well, that little bit of an annoyance far outweighs the risk of somebody hacking my account. So now if I'm in London, and this just happened last week, and I log into Amazon, and I get my text saying somebody just logged in from London, I go, yep, okay, that's me. But guess what, if I'm not in London, and I get that text, then I know there's a problem. I also do alerting for purchases. So before a purchase is made, I get a text that says, you are trying to make a $250 purchase. Is this okay? And now in real time, I can approve. And once again, if I'm purchasing on Amazon, and I usually do it on my phone anyway, as soon as I make the purchase, I go right to my messages, I go to the text, and I hit approved. Three extra seconds, and that's now going to make it that much harder for the adversary. And then finally, I use a separate credit card. I'm all about separation and reduction of risk. So I use one credit card only for my Amazon purchases. Why is that beneficial? Two reasons. One, if there is now fraudulent activity on my credit card, I know it came from Amazon because they're the only one that has that credit card. Second, if and when that credit card does get compromised, because it will happen, it doesn't impact anything else. I have friends of mine that use one credit card for online bills, for automatic transactions, for gas, for all these things. Now when there's a fraudulent transaction, they have to spend three or four hours changing and updating and adding in all that information, which is a huge, huge inconvenience. So if you go in and I have six different cards and I use a different card for each transaction, now I'm managing, controlling, and most importantly, minimizing and reducing the exposure. So I would argue that nothing in life is safe, but just like driving a car, e-commerce and online shopping can be done in a way that minimizes and controls the risk if you turn on the additional security, you use a separate card, and you're careful of where you go and what you do. And if you follow those rules, remember, we can make cyberspace a safe place to live, work and raise a family. And if you'd like a free chapter of my book, Online Danger, please go to onlinedanger.com.